Hi, welcome to the course of Biophysics 1. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the problems in the solutions to about the Bernoulli's equation. So let me remind you what was the Bernoulli equation. So if you have the pipe with the fluid, some fluid which is uh, flowing inside this pipe, what I would like to do is I would like to just cut this pipe at some point, and I would like to understand what is the total energy of the fluid. So it appears the total energy of the fluid depends on the three things. It depends on the height of the fluid, it depends on the pressure of the fluid at that point, and it depends on the velocity. So the total energy is accumulated with the pressure plus the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And the equation of the Bernoulli basically tells us that this energy is conserved. So basically this total energy is unchanged overall in, in any area of this pipe. So if I decide to just cross so cut the pipe at another point, for example, at the point, uh, at this point, was a different velocity, was a different pressure or the height, then the total energy is going to be again the same. So this is what does basically the Bernoulli's equation tell us. In this lecture, we are going to solve three problems, which is going to reveal us the connection between the velocity, pressure, and the height. So the first problem is given like this. Say I've got a pipe, which is located horizontally, but the cross-section areas are differentiable. So they are different in the two different parts. So since the height is equal, so the y1 is equal to the y2, then these two terms, rho g y1 and rho g y2, are going to be the same. So the rho is the density of the fluid, right? So it is going to be the same in both of the parts of the pipe. G is also the same, which is 9.8 in both of the parts, it is the same. So if y1 is equal to y2, the height of the fluid in two different parts of the fluid are the same, then these two values are going to be the same. And if you just put one of them into another side, it's going to be with the minus, so it's going to cancel out the another one. So these two terms wouldn't have them. So in this problem, we basically would like to try to understand the connection between the velocity and the pressure. Basically, since the cross-section area is changing, it means that the velocity is changing. And if the velocity is changed, how the pressure is going to be changed. So let's say we are given that the cross-section area in the beginning is equal to the 15 centimeters square. And the velocity of the fluid is equal to the two meters per second. We're also given that the pressure at the first point is given to be equal to the 120 kilopascals. So we are given that at the another point, the cross section area is equal to the five centimeters squared. So in order to solve this problem, first of all, we need to find the velocity of the fluid at the, at the, at the second point, right? Where the cross section area is equal to the five centimeters squared. So if you remember the concept of the volumetric flow rate, it basically tells us that it doesn't matter where is your flow, what is the diameter of your pipe, the amount of the flow which is going out from there is constant, from both of these points is constant. So the, the amount of the fluid which is passing through this point is going to be equal to the multiplication of the cross-section area into the velocity. So basically it's equal to the 15 multiplied to the t, which is equal to the 30. And this number 30 is a constant here at the different point as well. So if the volumetric, uh, so if the cross-section area is equal to the five centimeters in the square, then what is going to be the velocity? So that the multiplication of the velocity to the area is going to be equal to the 30. So, yeah, so it should be equal to the six, right? So the multiplication is going to be equal to the 30. So you, you see here, so the multiplication of the area to the velocity is equal to the 30 here. And the multiplication of the area to the velocity is also 30 here. So this might give you one more, one more tip uh, that if the cross section area is decreased, for example, three times, then the velocity is going to increase three times, right? So 15 is decreased three times, it becomes five. So that is why the velocity is increased three times, then it became six. So what we need to define in this problem is to find what's the pressure of the fluid at the second point. In order to do this, we are going to solve this problem, right? So you, you can see here that the velocity is increased. So since this value should not change, the sum of these two values should not change because this is the total energy and this is conserved, right? So then the pressure should be decreased. And we would like to find this numerically, what exactly the value of this pressure. In order to do this, we're going to do a couple of algebraic expressions. The velocity v2 is going to go uh, left, left hand side, 
and the pressure P2 at, the, at, at this point can be found using this formula. Now what we need to do is we just need to put all the values which we are given into this formula and evaluate the pressure at the second point. So the pressure at the first point is equal to the 120 kilopascals, or which is basically 120 times 10 in the power of 3 pascals, plus 1 over 2 rho of the water is equal to the, so this is given that the fluid inside our pipe is water, so that is why its pressure is equal to the 1000 uh, kilogram per meter in the cube. So this might be given differently as well, for example, 1,200. So we are going to see the different problems in this lecture as well, where the row might be different as well. So the row here is equal to the 1,000 multiplied to the velocity at the first point is equal to the T meter per, uh, per second in the square, right? So then we are going to substitute the velocity here. So it's going to be minus one over two. Rho again is 1,000. The velocity at the second point is six in the square. So if you calculate this, so it's going to be two in the power of two, it is four, multiplied to the thousand, it is four thousand, divided to the two, it's going to be two thousand, right? And here it's going to be 36, six in a, in a square, it's 36, over two, it's going to be 18, times thousand, it's going to be 18 thousand, with the minus. So minus 18 thousand plus two thousand, it's going to be equal to minus 16 thousand, with the plus 120, it's going to give you 104 thousand scales. So the pressure here is going to be decreased since the velocity is increased and its exact value is equal to the 104 kilopascals. Let's consider another problem which is going to reveal us the connection between the height and the pressure of the fluid. I've got a lake so where the, there is no flow of the water at any depth. So what I'd like to try to understand is so, uh, the, how the pressure is going to change if I go deeper into the lake. <coughs> so the pressure on a surface is going to be equal to the one atmospheric pressure. Uh, yeah. So the pressure here is equal to the one atmospheric pressure, which is equivalent to the 101,000 uh, pascals. And what I would like to try to understand is what is the pressure of the water at the 10 meters depth, okay? So what we are given is that, so we are on the lake, so there is no flow of the water at any part, at any depth of the, of the, of the water. So that is why the velocity V1 and velocity V2 are simply going to be equal to the zero. So what, what we are given here as well, so we need to include, uh, introduce the, the, um, the height, right? So let's assume that on a surface, the, the height is going to be equal to zero. So this is our notation. So since we are going deep inside, so the, the, the height is going to be decreased and it is going to be equal to the zero. Since the y1, the height on the surface is equal to zero, this term is also going to be neglect, right? So this is basically equal to zero. So now we've got the three terms, right? So the sum of the two terms should not unchanged, right? So it should be always the same. It doesn't matter how deep I'm going in, right? So since the height is decreasing, right? So I'm decreasing the height from zero to the minus 10, then the pressure should increase, right? So this is what does it mean, the conservation law. If I just decrease the height, then the pressure should increase. And what I would like to know is what exactly the value of the pressure there, right? So if I'm going deeper and deeper, the pressure is going to be increased and increased from this value, and what is the exact value of the pressure? So in order to do this, we just need to do the simple algebraic operation. So all of the terms uh, which are zero, we are going to just erase them. Then this term goes to the left and the pressure T at the second point, P2 is going to be equal to the pressure one minus rho G Y T. So let's put all the values. The P1 is equal to the 101 thousands Pascals, right? Minus rho is equal to the thousand. So we are talking about the water again. So the G is equal to the 8.9. And the y2 is equal to the negative 10, right? So the negative 10 multiplied to the minus is going to be plus. So multiplied to the 9.8 is going to be 98, right? So 98 multiplied to the 1,000 is going to be 98,000. If I just add this to the 101,000, I'm going to get 199,000, which is roughly equal to the two atmospheric pressure, right? So the pressure here at the, at the 10 meter depths on the lake is equal to the almost 200,000 scales. So this is the problem number two, which reveals us the connection between the height and the pressure. So the conclusion is that as 
as, uh, so as the height is decreasing, the pressure is increasing. Our next problem is also very interesting. So let's say I've got a cylindrical can, the solid was a circular top, and the diameter of the circle is equal to the four meters that you can imagine that this is the huge cylindrical can. So since the surface of this can is open, the pressure outside is going to be equal to the pressure of air, which is 1001 kilopascals, or which is like one atmospheric pressure. So what happens is that at the deep of 15 meters, there is a small hole appeared here, and the water is started pouring out from there. So the, what I would like to do is, I would like to understand what is the velocity of the water there. So in order to try to solve this problem, in order to try to know what is the velocity of the water there, I would like to use again the Bernoulli equation. So again, here at this point, I would like to denote, uh, so since the water is going out, uh, the pressure outside is going to be again equal to the pressure here in the beginning. So that is why the P1 is equal to the P2, so which is equal to the pressure of the air. So they are going to be canceled. So since P1, is equal to the PT, so one of them can go to the other side and cancel the another term. So here I'm going to denote the height of the uh, of the of the hole, the small hole, to be equal to the zero. We are going to denote, we're going to measure the height from there. Okay, so that is why y1 is equal to the zero. So that is why this term is also going to be equal to the zero. So the second height is equal to the 15 meters. So if you remember in our previous problems, for example, in problem number one, we'll discuss how the velocity is going to be changed if we change the cross-sectional area, right? So you can imagine that if the cross-sectional area is decreased from four meters to the one centimeter, so the radius is going to decrease from four meters into the one centimeters, which is really tiny with respect to the cross-sectional area of the, of the surface, right? So the velocity is going to increase a lot, right? So basically, since this diameter is much more smaller than this, then the velocity here is going to be much more higher than at this point. So that is why we can just neglect the velocity on the top. So we are going to just assume that this is equal to the zero because it's so small was compared to the velocity at the P1. So after all our assumptions and simplifications, we've got just an equation that one over two rho v1 in the square is equal to the rho g y2. So wait, so here the rows, I have the rows in the, in the both of the sides of the equation. It means that they, they can be canceled out as well, right? So it depends, it doesn't depend on the density of the fluid. So I can find from here that the velocity at this point is equal to, so if I just cancel out the rows, the two goes there up, right? It's gonna be two multiplied to the g y2. So two times G, which is 9.8 times Y2, it's a height of the fluid here, which is going to be equal to the 15. So it's going to be 294. So that is why V1 is going to be a square root of 294, which is equal to the 17.14 meters per second. So we have just solved three problems related with the Bernoulli's equation. There are lots of more problems and exercises in the course webpage. Just go there and take the online quizzes and check what you have just learned.